Following the series of videos around the theme of autism, in today's video, you'll discover how meditation may be an effective treatment for autism. Autism is a chronic neurodevelopmental disorder where a stress response to a rapid influx of information is initiated, destabilizing cognitive networks and short-circuiting adequate behavioral output. As a result, autistic people cannot respond adequately to stimulation and initiation of social behavior in a social context, such as with family, friends, and coworkers. Furthermore, depending on the ASD severity, social fears can be exacerbated by anxieties and internal conflicts. While it is essential to address the physical symptoms of ASD, it is equally essential to offer a holistic, evidence-based solution that aligns with the emotional and physical well-being of autistic people. It is known that social interaction from an early age is fundamental to human development at various levels, but in people with ASD, the development of skills and relationships that rely on adequate and repetitive brain stimulation to enforce networks that support decision-making for the well-being of a child might be severely impacted by hyperstimulation and a lack of social interaction caused by the disorder. Children with autism frequently lack the capacity to control fundamental social actions, including eye contact, emotion, and body motions. These kids often don't have the spontaneity to express their excitement and accomplishments with others. This significantly impedes and frustrates the growth of peer and student-teacher connections in the classroom. There is a specific network of neurons in the frontal cortex known as the mirror system. It provides the neurological underpinnings for humans' capacity to interpret and anticipate others' intentions. When one does a certain job, as well as when one witnesses that task being performed by others, mirror neurons become active. This network is impaired in autism, which leads to poor copying abilities and the inability to discern and understand the thoughts of others. There are many reasons to look at alternative treatment options for autism. According to prospective research, up to 75% of autistic people who are tracked into adulthood have poor or extremely bad results since there is no effective medication for ASD. Because of that, there is a high demand for non-drug therapy options because autism is a neurological childhood condition that persists into adulthood. Numerous strategies including acupuncture, massage, auditory integration training, detoxification, and neurofeedback have been proposed. However, there isn't enough research out there to either support or refute their veracity. Evidence from clinical studies and neuroscience research suggests that an approach based on yogic principles and meditative tools is worth pursuing. These methods offer relaxation and help children and adults express their feelings and skill more easily, providing a better quality of socialization, more familiarity with themselves, and confidence. Pediatric occupational therapists have been exploring the uses of meditation in people with neuronal disorders. It's been shown that meditation can help kids with autism cope with sensory overload. Meditation is a deliberate method of self-control that controls the flow of ideas, emotions, and instinctive bodily and mental responses. The human brain continually receives and absorbs innumerable pieces of information from the outside world that are conflicting, opposed, and dangerous to the organism in our achievement-driven culture. As a result, the brain triggers a stress reaction in the body that enlists defensive mechanisms and necessitates a high energy expenditure, which, over time, can put a significant strain on the body. The driving idea of meditation-centered practices that have evolved over thousands of years is to transition from a state of dualism, which is marked by conflict or poor adaptation to one of singularity or harmony. This is one of the first reported systematic approaches for promoting health and lifespan. It is also important to mention that parental stress is significantly increased by erratic behaviors in children with ASD, which makes it difficult for the family to maintain a respectable standard of living at home and in the community. Helping parents control their autistic child's behavioral tendencies is crucial, and recent studies on mindfulness interventions successfully addressed this problem. 
To become proficient in the theory and practice of mindfulness meditation, mothers of children with ASD between the ages of 8 and 15 participated in an eight-week mindfulness program. They taught their youngster mindfulness exercises based on this fluency. The paper's overall finding was encouraging, despite the difficulties associated with continuing a regular mindfulness practice. The degree of mindfulness, parental stress, family quality of life, and problem behaviors for children were used to illustrate the impact of the mindfulness intervention given to mothers and children. But why don't we dig a little deeper into the meditation practice? Did you know that the word meditation comes from the Latin meditare? It means to go to the center, in the sense of disconnecting from the outside world and turning your attention inside yourself. Meditation in Sanskrit is dhyana, which means to think or reflect. This is when you keep your awareness and attention without changing or oscillating your concentration. It is also understood as a state of ecstasy, promoting the dissolution of our identification with the ego and a real deepening of our senses. Meditation can lead to a state of mindfulness by allowing the person that is practicing to experience what the mind is doing as it does. It offers a union between the mind and the body in search of a physical and mental balance, which is essential when someone wants to develop self-knowledge and awareness. Both traditional and modern meditation are tools to access higher states of consciousness. According to the meditation practice, in higher states of consciousness, duality is dissolved, and so conflicting thoughts or feelings subside, leading someone to regain a sense of connectedness, peace, and equanimity. The observation of one's thoughts and their flow is progressively reduced and a quiet and safe space signifies the balance between both unities in a person's existence while they are meditating. There are different passive meditation techniques that can be performed lying down, sitting, or standing still for comfort and relaxation. The concentration technique is called mental training. The open state is where the meditator becomes a mere spectator of the intrusive thoughts that invade the mind. Fearlessness, when the practitioner strives to bring to mind a fearless certainty, a kind of unshakable confidence and compassion, which can translate as a great feeling of love for all. Breathing exercises are a common subject of concentration during meditation, but they are especially intriguing in the context of autism, because the majority of autistic children have some degree of nasal dominance. The aim and execution techniques may vary. It can serve simply as a means of relaxation from daily routine, or as a technique to cultivate mental discipline. Exercise and character development, such as mindfulness, have a good impact on fundamental executive functions, including self-control, cognitive flexibility, and working memory in circumstances requiring high levels of executive function. Even though meditation can be a useful tool for many kids with autism, it is only beneficial if there's an understanding of its purpose. Children with severe autism can be unable to fully utilize the skills and practice meditation correctly. They might lack a basic understanding of its purpose. Despite that, there are many options available that might be more suited to each child. There are several styles of meditation available nowadays. Each type uses varied levels of intense concentration on various things to attain a peaceful, meditative state of mind. Regardless of technique, they all attempt to promote self-relaxation and self-healing, which lends to improved cognitive and behavioral performance. Meditation as a therapy may be effective in combating the impaired brain synchronization and severe symptoms that arise in the early years of autism. Incorporating mindfulness activities into a child's daily life could seem difficult at first, but it is extremely easy. It may be done before a child goes to bed or while taking a walk. It may also follow personal hygiene in the morning ritual. The caretaker should take notice of the child's routine to see where the practicing might fit in. As a therapy method, meditation may provide unique benefits that complement a healthy lifestyle that includes a balanced physical exercise program, nutritious food, and a supportive environment. Meditation is one of the few therapies that has been shown to successfully increase both character development and self-control at the same time.
It's plausible to infer that mindfulness techniques may be a practical way to enhance not just the behavioral and cognitive responses in people with ASD, but also the general well-being of their primary caretakers, as the previous study between mothers and ASD children indicated. In today's video, we mainly focused on meditation as a therapeutical method, but what do you think about the practice? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in another video soon. If you're interested in autism, check out the content on our channel.